Hello everybody and welcome back. So let's talk about lighting uh, this scene. There's a couple of frames that I want to show and discuss the idea or the theory that I went through. So while working on this, we did the uh, we did the focus on the fire and we you know we have a ring of fire that needs to be put in emphasis in the scene and we also have an environment which is here. I will talk about that in a bit. But basically surrounding this uh, spaceship, there is a, a large ground and there is m mountains and hills covering the horizon. Now, the main, uh, the main thing here is we have few contradictions with this shot. The main thing that I wanted to put or to emphasize in this is the spaceship rising with the fire around it. But I also have this nice environment that I wanted to show. So... I have these nice rocks, this nice, you know, setup, and I, I thought, yeah, that that everything there needs to be included and be visible, and the viewer has to see all of that. Okay, so then as we progress in time, we get this uh, super lightning, super bright light in the center, the blue magical effects, and I thought, well, lightning cannot work if everything is bright. It has to be dark for us to see it properly. So that factor means that I have to keep everything dim and low to balance it with the lightning so that when it happens, it's still meaningful, the composition works. And this is actually very, very tricky because if we have lighting sources that changes over time quite drastically, it's gonna be hard to balance that across the board. And if, I, if we go through here step through a few frames let me disable caching for this you will see that i'm actually dimming the environment quite a bit few frame one frame before the lightning happens see this is before and then this is after that's to replicate as if something super bright came into screen or we're looking through this we have to adjust uh, our eyes to see you know the brightest thing properly and everything else will get dim like proper exposure and when we get to this frame pretty much everything else is dark except this lightning and then we see uh, except this light and then we see this lightning in the center and then uh, the magical effects i think i could have done better w in terms of lighting to dim out this red light here and just have these frames be the uh, the the magical effects time so we can see it properly and then after that goes so after that phase the lighting still has to be interesting okay so what i've wanted to do is i wanted to show and put emphasis for the fire and it's going to be more visible later so once we go through this there's no more the lightning effects the lighting effects in the entire scene is dimmed down and the focus is in the center and this is primarily done in comp it's not uh, the the lighting in the scene is not changing i just rebalanced uh, uh, the aovs so that i put emphasis in the center and then and then as we go we will see that i have this uh, light this fog light and the main focus is the center light and then everything else is complementing. We can see the ring of fire, we can see everything nicely, it's all well balanced. Now to go back to this, this lighting itself, uh, the, the way I look at it is I need to make something interesting. I need to make this shot interesting. I need to show the curvatures as, as much as possible and to show all these details, all these cavities, you know, everything has to look correct and, and be visible to the viewer. So when the idea of this orange light or the top light, we go to this frame. Yeah, so this frame. I wanted to have something so that when this collapses, we can see it collapsing. Okay, we can see a difference. We can see shadows changing. And the 
the only way I was able to get that is by having a light like this, you know, and this light will hit one side. So basically this is the shape I was looking for. We can clearly see one side here and all of this is in the dark and we can read the silhouette. We can read the curvature and the cavities. And then as it goes, the, this part has a lot of details. You know, all that shadow is going to be cast onto here. So it's going to give us a lot of breakouts, a lot of nice uh, details in the scene. You can see the volumetrics here. And that's what I wanted to have. I, want, I needed that source so that I get this contrast. You know, you see this part here getting hit. All this part is bright and then the, sun, the center is dark. And I, I wanted that. So that light placement here has a purpose. It's not just to make it look pretty. I needed and I wanted those details. So I figured that out. I said, okay, now what about the environment? You know, this environment has to feel massive. So I started looking at ways to do that. And the first one to create the contrast, obviously, is I need to complement the color. So I put a backlight with a blue tone that will just fill whatever is behind the scene. But I wanted to show the scale as well. So the easiest way to show a large scale is to show cloud projected onto the ground and you have a pattern, a moving pattern of the, of the cloud, you know, the shadow, the cloud shadows on the ground. And so if a light is coming from the back, uh, hitting the mountains, it's not going to reach here uniformly, you know. So all this is shadow projected from the mountains and they have noise. You can see a noise pattern. It's not uniform. And I needed that bright cup to show that the light is going through a massive large of atmosphere and it's getting, you know, these breakups. So that's one light. And then uh, I added, you know, various other lights to make sure that I hit and light every part of the scene in a different color. And then in comp, I can continue playing with this. So this would be very dim lights that we don't see them in the in the beauty render but we can access them as AOVs and this I rebalance every shot to make sure that I get the center that I need and there is many ways that we could go about this uh, this scene the only the main uh, or, or the other main idea that we could go about is to actually have the center be brighter and everything else is illuminated by it so we would see you know, a huge ring of fire of light that would illuminate everything around it and it would go to dark very, very quickly. We wouldn't be seeing this brightness at all. So that's another approach that we could go about uh, working with, with a scene. But to get back to this, the main thing I do with lighting is to put an, uh, on emphasis to put an emphasis on my work, you know, whether it's the smoke, whether it's the environment, whether it's the spaceship, I need to use the lighting in the most interesting way so that when, when I render it, I get nice shadow, I get nice details as everything moves, we can, you know, we capture all that details and then it needs to be balanced. So whatever lighting we have, we still have a very bright fire source and the fire is very, very bright. So I have to make sure that whatever I do is going to be uh, tuned um, and balanced in the screen so it looks nice across the board. So that's one, uh, that's one sequence. This, the second sequence is with the, with the lava. And here, obviously, I just wanted the lava source, you know. So this is going to be the brightest source in the scene and if you look at any lava concept art or something like this you will see that the source of lighting is always the center okay and i focused on that i made sure that it glows and it has nice you know it's affecting nicely the environment and then everything else that is going to be dark it's going to be super dark we only see these veins and then the spaceship has a couple of lights to catch these speculars and stuff like that but I didn't spend too much time on this, to be honest, as much as the other one. But uh, to explore this with this context with the lava, the main lighting source is going to be lava. So probably all this is actually not going to be visible. You know, the spaceship, it's going to be 
this source is going to be brighter it's going to cover everything and there will be smoke and shadows behind this so it will be much darker and that's why i added this source lighting source in the center just to have something there as it goes through the 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 smoke it's interactive and it's casting shadow you can see details and the main purpose for this light is to create more interesting composition and more interesting details that's all so when it comes to lighting we have uh, to think about what we need to show the the most important things that we need to show we have to make sure that we capture the viewers attention so we use any lighting trick and make sure that whatever we place is going to give us the shadows and the uh, you know the light the lighting effects that we want to put in context what we've created and that's it we're going to start setting a few things up in in houdini and get this going thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video bye bye